All right, kids cam. Hopefully you will have memorized that verse for after lunch when we spend some more time learning that. We're going to talk about that verse today as well. And in fact, right now what we're going to do is we are going to learn from this most amazing, most incredible, you need to know it and read it kind of a book. How many of you have ever seen something like this before? Do you know what this is called? This is called a Bible. In fact, this is my Bible. This is the one that I get to use. I use it at church. I use it when I'm teaching in our weekend services. And every time we get together every day, it in fact is so important that I'm going to spend time with us every single day and we're going to read it and learn from it. And then after our teaching time, when we have lunchtime together every day in your groups, you're going to have an opportunity to talk about what we're learning in the Bible. It's that important. In fact, one of the things that we can think about in this book is that it's kind of like a mission plan. Ever thought about the Bible like that before? It's like a mission plan. Does anyone know who wrote the Bible? Who wrote the Bible? Shout it out if you know. Okay, I heard some cautious answers. Some of you weren't so sure. But I did hear someone say God. How many of you know that God wrote the Bible? You can put your hand up. Oh, you, so you were just being shy and not answering me. Nice. Okay, so this mission book, this rescue plan, we could even call it that, this rescue plan is a book that God gave us. It's written by him. It's all about him. In fact, as we spend time reading this book, if you were to spend time reading this book, you will learn all sorts of things about an amazing God who had an incredible rescue plan. And it tells us God's mission in this book. So you know what? Today what we're going to do is we're going to start at the beginning and we're going to learn about how in the beginning of this rescue plan, in the beginning of the mission was something that we can call creation. Do you know what creation is? Creation is when you make things, right? Maybe some of you in school this year had a project where you had to create something and present it to your class. Maybe some of you had to create something at home and then bring it and show everyone what you had made at home. Well, in the Bible, God's book to us, this rescue plan, this mission that God has given to us, we can read about how God, too, created. And we're going to find out about some things that God did. And in fact, I have a cool space experiment to show you today as we learn as well. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray. Because this is God's word to us. And I want to pray right now and say, God, can you help teach us from this what we're going to learn today? And then I'll show you what exactly we're going to learn. So pray that with me. Maybe, maybe you don't know what prayer is. And prayer is really when we talk to God. And so I'd love for you to maybe close your eyes just so we're not thinking about anything else or anyone else around us. And sometimes if we feel like we need to, we just fold our hands so we're not distracted. We're not fidgeting with things. We're not touching our neighbors and our group. But if you feel distracted, you can fold your hands. And so let's close your eyes and fold our hands. And let's ask that God would teach us right now for a few minutes as we learn about this amazing story. God, thank you for this chance just to be able to stop right now and open up the Bible, this amazing rescue plan that you've given to us. God, just like in our story today when maybe some of the characters wondered, what is the purpose of this mission? God, your Bible tells us it. You tell us exactly what the plan was all along. So help us learn that. And we pray right now as we maybe learn it for the first time, or we've heard it before, but we stop and say, wow, God is in control. He knows everything. This is his plan. This is his world. He's the creator. So God, teach us right now. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, I'll come back to the Bible in a moment. Here's what we're going to learn today. In the very first parts of the Bible, we have a passage in a book called Genesis, And so today our story comes from Genesis chapter 1 and 2. Maybe you've read these passages before. Anyone read a book called Genesis before in the Bible? Maybe it's new to some of us. Maybe some of us, as I prayed, have read it many times before. You know exactly what happens. But here's why we want to learn Genesis 1 and 2 together. is because when we go to our small group times today, we're going to talk about what happens in Genesis 1 and 2. Or maybe what happened in the drama today and how it connects and relates to Genesis 1 and 2 or even in our lives. So that's our passage. But here's what we're going to learn in Genesis 1 and 2 today. Now, how many of you have ever learned like the main theme or the big idea before? You've heard that word before? In our space camp this week here at Hope Kids Camp, we are going to learn every single day something that we're going to call the gravity pull. Can you say that with me? The gravity pull. You know what gravity does, right? 
everything comes back down to earth because of something called gravity. It's cool. God made it. And gravity is what keeps us down. It keeps us grounded on the ground so we don't float out in space. So today we're going to learn our very first gravity pull that pulls our attention, that helps us focus. What are we trying to learn? One thing from our story. And I want to show you on the screen what our gravity pull is this. And you're going to see this in Genesis chapter 1 and 2. It's creating the world and everything in it was part of God's mission. Can you say that with me all together? Creating the world and everything in it was part of God's mission. So maybe as you heard me, you thought, well, what's this mission that God wrote in the Bible? Well, everything that God made in this world, as we're going to learn in Genesis 1 and 2, was a part of God's mission. And we're going to do that today through a bit of a science experiment. What does this look like in this bottle? Yes, it is water. In fact, in our jar today, I'm going to take this jar and I'm going to add some water. There we go. There's some water. And in fact, in Genesis chapter 1 and 2, one of the things that we learn is that, as I pop the lid on our green food coloring, the Bible tells us that God created every single thing that we can see. So all the grass, all the plants, all the trees, all the flowers. How many of you love being outside in the summertime? Put your hand up. I hope you do, because your parents will probably kick you outside if you're inside too much in the summer. Go outside, play, be in fresh air. Enjoy God's creation. So here comes some green drops we're going to put in here. We'll mix it in and I'll stir this around. So the Bible tells us in Genesis 1 and 2 that God made everything green. But you know what? God also made everything that was living. You know that? How many of you have a favorite animal? How many of you have a least favorite animal? Now keep your hand up. You've got a least favorite animal? All right, let me tell you about some of my least favorite animals. I'm not a big fan of snakes. I'm not a big fan of sharks. And I'm not a big fan of alligators. Ugh. So you will never, boys and girls, hear this. This is a promise that I'm pretty positive I will always keep. You will never catch me swimming with sharks. You will never catch me with a pet snake. And you will never catch me in water where I think there might be an alligator. Because those are my least favorite animals. But you know what? In Genesis 1 and 2, the Bible tells us God made them all. They might be scary to us, but God says, you know what? I am the creator, this is my mission plan, I make everything. So all of the green vegetation, God made it. And God also made all of the animals. And you know what, we're gonna add something else. Does anyone have any guess what this is? It is oil, someone said that like right away, good guess, maybe you like baking. How many of you are in the baking elective? Put your hand up. You probably knew the answer. Use oil and baking, I'm gonna put this in here. So here's some Oil that I'm adding to water, maybe some of you already know where this is going, because you're thinking, oh no, Pastor Greg, don't you know what happens with oil and water? And if you don't know what happens, I'm just going to shake this up. The Bible tells us that God made all things and mixed it together. God said a little bit of plants here, and God said, let there be mountains there, and let there be light there. And so now we have this very cloudy thing that we have in our creation. Everything was mixed together. And you know what? As we read Genesis 1 and 2... If you've ever read that before, maybe you read it and you think, wow, God did this in a very organized way. On day one, he said, let there be light. And on day two, he continued until all the way to day six. You're like, wow, it seems like God had a plan all along. It almost seems like, just like in our gravity pull, creating everything in this universe was exactly a part of God's mission plan. And so God creates all these beautiful things. In fact, one of the things the Bible tells us too is that on the very last day, I need to open up my jar again to add one more thing, one more layer or level to this creation. On the sixth day of creation, do you know what God made? You know what this is, right? This is soap. I'm gonna put in some dish soap, usually for dishes, but today it's for our space experiment at camp. And I'm gonna shake it again. And we'll leave that. That'll change. So the Bible tells us that God made all of the plants and vegetation. Then God made all of the animals and everything that was living. But then God stopped on day six and he looked at his creation and he said, I'm not done yet. There's one thing left that I need to create. And I want to show you what exactly God says. Here in my Bible... I want to read you Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, because on the, on the sixth day of God's creation, the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 1 that he makes the very first people. Did you know that God made people? 
He makes the very first people, their names were Adam and Eve. Maybe some of you were named Adam or Eve, but those are the very first two people that the Bible tells us. And listen to this, boys and girls, listen to this. In Genesis chapter 127, this is how special we are as part of God's creation. It wasn't just like, well, what's left over? I don't know, I just need to think of something else. But but I actually want to make something so amazing. And in fact, I'm gonna make something that's gonna kind of look like me and act like me and be like me. And in Genesis chapter 127, I think we even have it on the screens. It says, so God created man in his own image, just like him. It says, in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. The Bible's talking about Adam and Eve. And God put them in this beautiful garden, enjoying some of the amazing parts of God's creation. In fact, we have some pictures to show you too, just of things that God made. Things like the galaxies and the stars. You know, our theme this week in camp is space. And so maybe I'll show you a picture of this beautiful sky. Look at that, over the horizon. Do you know, boys and girls, that the Bible tells you that God made every single star? He created the galaxies. In fact, the Bible says, too, that he upholds the universe by the word of his power. So every single day, you know what one person said? Every single day, it's like God in the heavens is saying to the sun, can you, can you rise again? Can you go back up again? And at the end of the day, it comes back down. Then he says to the moon, God says every day, all right, moon, time to go up in the sky. God does that every day because he's in charge of this amazing mission. So beautiful sunsets with all the stars and sky. But you know, in that verse that I just read, in Genesis 1.27, God says, even compared to all the beautiful things that I have made, more important than all of that is is people. And do you know why that's amazing? Is because today we're gonna talk about how God created us in his image. We were a part of God's mission. As we learn this story this week, we're gonna learn how God had us in mind all along. God said, no, there's, there's a very specific reason why I'm gonna create every single boy and girl here at camp. I want them to know how awesome I am. You know, there were times in the story where people were going to listen to God and then times in the story when they wouldn't listen to God. Maybe just like our characters in our story today, they thought, okay, well, what's the purpose of of this mission? What's the purpose in life? You're gonna hear in in this mission plan from God, you're gonna hear how God says, I want you to first of all know I'm always in charge. I'm the creator. God's gonna tell us in the story, he's gonna say, I also want you to know something else very, very important. It's this. I want you to enjoy this beautiful creation that I've made. I want you to look around at a sunset and say, wow, God did that. Or a sun, sunrise, God did that. Your favorite animal or your least favorite and say, wow, God made everything. But you know what? As we're gonna find out tomorrow even, God also gave them a rule in these first couple days when we hear about people. God wanted to see if they would really trust him as captain. Are you really gonna enjoy this beautiful creation? Are you really gonna allow me to be in charge all the time? Because if not, things are gonna go wrong. But if yes, I want you to see what's gonna happen in this beautiful creation. So our story kind of begins in a garden, a garden garden that has the very first things that God has created. How many of you can kind of see this jar up here too? Kind of see what's happening here? Now we have, if we were to leave it even longer, you can maybe see just in the bottom here, but see at the bottom here? This was, our, this was our green water that we added. And this right here is some of the oil that we added. And this right here is all the soap from what we added later on. And we shook it all together. But you know what? These three things don't mix. They will always be kind of separate like this. So you can kind of see how they're separate. You know what? Tomorrow in our story, we're gonna find out about how even though God made everything in this world, The very first people that God created, they made some choices that really separated things. In fact, maybe we think, wow, God's amazing mission plan, his amazing rescue. Now it seems like God's mission was wrecked and ruined forever. Now just like like in our video today we saw in the drama, now it seems like they've aborted the mission. Oh no, what's gonna happen now? Aren't they gonna listen to Captain Jay? And that's what we're gonna find out tomorrow. So what I'm gonna do is I I wanna pray with us And I want to ask that as we go to our lunchtime today, that God would help us have really great conversations. Maybe some of you 
have never really read Genesis 1 and 2 and you wanna take time with your groups today as you get to know your leaders and other friends in your group and say, does anyone wanna tell me more about what happened in Genesis 1 and 2? Or I've never heard about God before. Can you tell me who this God is as this creator? I thought things just happened accidentally. I thought things just exploded and the world happened by, by random accident. And maybe someone in your group or your leader can say, actually, do you know that the Bible tells you that everything was created so beautifully by an amazing mission planned God? Those are great questions to ask. So let's pray. And then I have a few announcements for lunch. Dear God, thank you for the Bible. Thank you for all of the things we learn in the Bible. It's really a mission, God. It's, it's something that you want to do to accomplish something. And we're going to find out about what you're looking to accomplish this week as we read parts of it. Thank you, God, that as we read and see how this is a rescue plan, that this was all part of your plan. As our gravity pull today said, God, you created everything in the world. You created us too, God. We're in your image. You love us so much. And, and we're so thankful that we get to be a part of this. And so God, now as we get ready for lunch, we pray, first of all, would you bless our lunch to our bodies? We would get energy and strength for the afternoon. But God, also we pray that you help us have some really good conversations about things we're learning, about our gravity pull or help us learn our memory verse, help us talk about questions that our leaders wanna ask us and help us listen to each other and our groups to learn together. So thank you, God, right now for today. Thank you that we started camp and had a great morning. And we pray we'd have a great afternoon. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.